We will be lucky because the lecture the teacher is late, so we can start this reviewing yesterday. So I think has not done it. You have not done it. You have not reviewed the. <laughs> you were here yesterday, yes? No. You were not here yesterday. Okay. And that was the first one. Just, yeah, you were the first. Yeah, yeah you're right. I picked him the first day, so. oh, yeah. You have done it, no? Yeah, I was. You were second, and. No, I haven't. Yeah, you yeah, haven't yeah, done yeah. it. No, oh, you were not. Should I do it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I wasn't. Here, but I think it's okay. We, it's, it's okay, anyway. We were supposed it, to talk about multiple sequence alignment, yeah. I guess. So there were a lot of problems because, well, how do you, first of all, how do you score it and how do you find a, a good algorithm? Because, yeah, just like this. And there are many different ways of scoring them uh, depending on how you, how you know how you organize, like the tree of and whatever. And also, you know, what you start with when you start trying to align these multiple sequences, it, it increases exponentially, of course, with the amount of sequences. Um, so that's a big problem as well. Uh, and then we talk, we continue talking about a lot of stuff we could learn about. Once we have this multiple sequence, we can, what we can learn from it regarding like prediction of structures and so on and so forth. And those qualities, you know, uh, once we have a good alignment, of course, because the problem once again is scoring and judging the how well an alignment. Is. So we're good alignment, bad alignment. Oh, really? Oh, that's Edda, that's the teacher. No, no. We, we just started a bit before you. <laughs> so, give us five minutes and then I give it to you. Yeah? We have to review what we did yesterday. And also some stuff about hidden Markov models, like an introduction of hidden Markov models. And, uh, Oh yeah, the side blast, the side blast algorithm. So, <laughs> so side, the, uh, the idea of side blast, I think, is kind of at least, is an important concept to, to understand really why, 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 why many parts of bioinformatics are important. First of all, you need to have a fast algorithm, it's important because we have practical purposes, but also that the statistics is really important. Really, if you start having a lot of false positives here, or if you miss a lot of the ones you have, you don't really gain and you have to make it worse, probably. But that's the same as with all of these, like, incomplete, what are they called, where you don't have all the information and the incomplete, inconsistent problems or something. What are they called? Yeah, it's it, 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 like so, so, yeah. 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 it, it, it really makes a difference. Yeah, basically statistics. Like, yeah. I mean, but it's... But I mean, there are a lot of, I mean, a lot of juristic things, but it's a lot of, like, I, mean, I think actually key key concept why it works is actually good estimates of d values. Early methods used combination of the score and the length and something like that, but not at all in such a good statistical way. But it was, I think this really actually made a big difference. And so the, the blast was fast, made a difference, it was practically useful. But the idea behind this is basically the same as, you know, uh, when you do like crystallography and you do structural refinement, it's sort of the same. You have a, a lot of potential structures and you filter them and then you sort of line them and then you phase it and they go back and then you do it over again. Uh, so like yes, yeah, somehow. Did, 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 yeah, I mean, somehow, I mean, crystallography has a similar problem, basically. You're, 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 I mean, there was a lot of. I mean, one key concept of was when you actually have so much data, you could exclude some part of the data for testing, so then you avoid overfitting. But it's. Here it's, of course, you don't really know the answer, so it's, you don't have experimental data, so it, it, it is... Uh, well, you, you can tune things, but it's... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it, the same are focused on the case also. I'm not, I'm not sure that uh, crystallography is always gets such a... Uh, well, sometimes the computation is limiting, of course, but... Actually, the method seems to be going slower the, older, the, the more computers we have, so... Not, not necessarily better, but yeah. <coughs> but I mean, certainly, certainly there are other problems in the same way. Okay, um, and what did we have to do? We talked a bit about uh, what? So, so what else do you think we can do with the multiple sequence alignment? So far, we use basically for sequence searching. So, what, what, what? That's what we'll talk about next. Well, probably starting on Friday. But so, uh, as you mentioned, it was. Um, some parts were, I mean, we, can use, we, we, can, we can look at these alignments and extract structural information, or information, I mean, a lot of different types of information. So, 
one type of information is the secondary structure probabilities. But it, 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 so you can you can look at it and you can guess it yourself. And even people that can man be manually good, but certainly this is something a computer is much more likely to much better than us. And there are a lot of different information. For us, like so, the some amino acids like to be more in the sheet or the helix. So that's one one factor. But I also for so that you have more of the gaps. Well, this is the environment, but uh, in the region here you have more gaps in the loop regions. So that's also information. And then how concerned things are, etc. So you have a lot of different uh, factors that you somehow put together. So this is what you do when you do secondary structure prediction. So that's next week. But now I think we can ask Ed, are you ready? Do you want to start? So then I'll... So we have... We're lucky to have Ed Clip here to talk about systems biology... something. 